Ooh, welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the wild card playoff preview series. We will be doing one of these every single weekend for y'all previewing every single game that happens throughout the playoffs. You know, we're just going to talk about it. We're going to yap about it. We're going to hopefully get Tony to flow some tears down the face about it. Talk about underdog picks. Talk about, you know, just general storylines. We're just going to yap about the playoffs. Weather. That's what we're here. Weather is not my category anymore. I'm <laughs> this is the one you time you were the be. weatherman of the year, being like it's nothing but sunshines and rainbows every week. Now we got a little <laughs> oh, bit God. of snow and it matters, and you're out. You mean it? I was the weatherman of the year. Weatherman of the year. All right, I'm back. It wasn't one of us. I'm, I'm back, <laughs> baby. A lot of weather actually yeah. disrupting the games this weekend. So you guys need me. You need me more than you've ever needed me before. We're going to win you some money. But make sure if you've never signed up on Underdog Fantasy where we'll be making a lot of picks, you think that was going to distract me. It's not going to distract me. Use promo code BDGE if it's your first time on there. They're going to double whatever you put down. Plus, you'll get a free square in every playoff game throughout. There are many playoff games to be played throughout the rest of January. Into February, we will be here previewing every single one of them. Fucking we give out a lot of picks that say that we say are guarantees, that's actually a guarantee. When you get that double, <laughs> when you get that deposit match bonus, that is guaranteed. Legally, send it to your lawyer. Tell them to come at us. Where do we want to start? Maybe top? Yeah, let's just start from Cleveland. the top. We got Cleveland heading to Houston. So we've got two games. What's it? Two Saturday, three Sunday, one, two Monday? Correct. One Monday. One Monday. All right, so Cleveland is heading to Houston. At home, Houston is two-point dogs. Total is 44 and a half. It's a very interesting matchup we got here. We got the new kids on the block. C.J. Stroud, rookie quarterback, D'Amico Ryan's first-time head coach, Bobby Slowick, first-time O.C. play caller, versus the veterans, the grizzled season vets of Joe Flacco, Kevin Stefanski. Straight up, just an awesome game. Mm -hmm. Like, outside of Rams lines, this might be my favorite one. Facts. There's so many cool storylines, inter like, interwoven in here. Oh, absolutely. We also, like, this is going to be a, a huge narrative of a lot of these games. Uh, the revenge factor. Maybe not so much this one, but you got to remember, like, Cleveland gave up everything to get That's Deshaun true. Watson on their team. Oh, I didn't even think. Me yeah, either. the most Again, obvious I thought you story. Were like, I thought you were going long road, like Flacco <laughs> versus Ravens eventually. No, no, no. no. I, I mean, hopefully. But even right now, I don't think it was technically the pick they used to take C.J. Stroud. It was the one that they used to trade up to get Will Anderson. But, you know, Browns traded a lot to get Deshaun Watson, and now they're balling out with Joe Flacco. So... That will be interesting to see how Joe Flacco does returning to the NFL, returning to the playoffs. Here's the thing. I think a lot of people are mentioning the fact that this Cleveland defense, although it has been very good, on the road, not so good. They've struggled a little bit. People are going to point at points per game, yards allowed, all this and all that, and they're going to mention how good C.J. Stroud is at home. I'm still nervous. I'm still very nervous about a rookie quarterback going up against this defense, which is on a play-by-play -play basis, still really good. Yeah. And you look at Cleveland, too. I feel like uh, I feel like the youth is going to be a problem for Houston for sure. It's mm -hmm. like you got to be nervous when you're going out there for the first time. I want to see Stroud rip it up. It would be really mm -hmm. cool. But if you, look about the, if you look at the dudes who are, like, doing it for Cleveland, they're all vets. You know, it's like Flacco's been there before. Mark My, Cooper. Mark Cooper, Miles Garrett. It's like the playmakers have been there before, you know, and I feel like they'll be a little bit toned down. They'll, they'll understand how to prepare for this. Whereas, like, Houston, you know, I, Nico, Will done? Anderson, like, CJ. I feel like there's a lot of Browns players that probably haven't been there. I just mean more so, like, around the league for a while. So they played in Fair. big games, okay, whether okay. it's, like, playoffs or not. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, they'll... they'll Overall fits. Bright lights, yeah. yeah. Jim Schwartz, their defensive coordinator, who's been doing well, he's been here before. Another theme across a lot of these games is... You know, first time or quarterbacks entering playoffs for the first time versus guys who have been here before. Historically, they don't do too well. And, you know, on the road, Cleveland's defense, they're susceptible to big plays. Essentially, overall, that's why they haven't looked as good. But again, on a down to down basis, they've still been a top defense. Denzel then you asked the question. Denzel Ward uh, just popped up on the injury report, too. I think did he, he really? just practiced with like a hamstring. Really? Yeah. Yeah, Fuck. him and Jerry Alexander both did. I think D different games, obviously, but yeah, that'd be Still big got for the Nico Collins. Boy, though. Still got the deep boy, Miles Garrett. Potentially, he's my deep boy. He's think? gonna. I think he's gonna win. Probably. He's like heavily favored, isn't he? I think it's probably between between him and Parsons, but not <laughs> not even considering Watt. Watt? Oh, I, would, I would definitely consider Watt. I don't I know. Feel like I Watt think should win it. Like yeah. realistically, I I don't know. He leads in a fuck ton of shit. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, back to this game. Browns defense has been susceptible to big plays. So you got to ask yourself, like, that's kind of Houston's offense, though. You know, they try to mix in a run, a run game. 
doesn't feel like it works all that much? Do they just let C.J. Stroud rip you it and rip it? think between the two, like, shit backfields, like, one of them surprise us? I don't Ford and Singletary, like, that's so boring Houston's on paper. Rundy is, like, actually super good. They got, so, they got trashed by JT last week, but I looked mm-hmm. that up. They hadn't allowed a 75-yard rusher since week three prior to JT. Yeah, so, both of I these mean, run they, defenses are really nice. And both of these defenses have been slightly known to give up some big plays. And then you look at the fact that both these quarterbacks just fuck it and chuck it down the field. I mm-hmm. think we, you know, there's going to be opportunities of but some big plays here. Do you think like the Flacco interceptions thing costs them here? Like mm. that's got to catch up. It will in the playoffs. I don't know if it's going to be here though. Fair. Yeah, I, I like Houston in this one. You I like think Houston? that's where I'm. What, what's the spread? Two. Like th- there might be a two and a half floating around there. The thing is, Damn. is a, a couple times throughout this week. It's gone up to three, and then any time a three pops up, it gets hammered back down to like two and a half. I that think make, three is. Sense. I think three is too much, but I don't. I like them to win. You like Houston to win. I think yeah. obviously under three, like Houston is a very live dog. But I'm taking I, Cleveland if it's under three for sure. I think I, I'm taking Cleveland too. Man. As much as I love this Houston team, and you guys know I've loved this Houston team for a minute now, I just think they've. Uh, I they've they've had their game. I kind I kind of think last week against Indianapolis, making the playoffs, winning Fair. the division, like they were projected to win like what two games this year. That's why, yeah, like they so fucking far outreached what they were supposed to do coming into the. I rem- they were like in the category because we didn't know what Stroud was going to be, but they were. It, a lot of people projected them to have the first or second overall pick again next mm-hmm. year. Not you know obviously they took but Will Anderson. That's so. why they remind me of the twenty twenty one Bengals. That's what I keep comparing them to. They have been compared to that team a lot. I just think mm. it's so rare that that happens that it's like what are the chances it's like coming again. around again another one you know one comparison i do want to make with this team is the 2012 indianapolis colts another team with a rookie quarterback andrew luck and a rookie head coach chuck pagano okay. they were coming off a two-win season they were projected to be pretty bad and then they won 11 games um i don't believe they won their division they went and faced baltimore in the first round a team that, you know, historically good defense. They had a veteran head coach in Harbaugh. And, you know, it. they just – they met their match at that yeah. point. They got so beat. So, what's Flacco again? Can we, can we play some Flacco, hypotheticals yeah. here? All yeah. right. So, the quarterback situation is, like, super interesting. Let's say – let's say hypothetical, either of these team, either of these QBs lead their team to the Super Bowl. Like, Flacco takes the Browns to the Super Bowl, goes through Houston, whoever the – Ravens, whatever, right? Like what? What is Flacco next year? That's <laughs> Retired. so tough. You gotta call it. Yeah, you don't like, think I he don't tries think to sign like a two-year big deal with another team or something? If just for the money, maybe. But I don't think he cares. I think he just like that's the coolest ending. Like that's literally Cinderella story. Yeah. Like you have to wrap it up. Yeah. It's not gonna get better from there. No, Even if you can still no. play, it ain't gonna get Some better. Some team will. Yeah. <laughs> they're, like they're I saw an interview in the locker room. He's like, "Yeah, I don't even know if I got a game check yet." <laughs> he's like, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, like, he's just so happy I don't to think be there he, yeah. for a second. Okay, but Stroud though, Stroud's the one I'm more interested in talking about because, like, all right, so right now I think he's still he's definitely still like sitting outside the pantheon of like the great quarterbacks in the league right now. If Stroud makes a run to the Super Bowl as a rookie. Is he all right? Because you like you think about like you got Mahomes, and you got Allen, and you've got whoever else you want to throw into like the top five, whether it's Hurts, Lamar, whatever, Burrow. And I think he's like kind of teetering still outside there because we need him to prove it. If he goes straight to the Super Bowl this year, is he like right in there with like Burrow? I think so. I think a lot of it has yeah. to do with like his attitude, though. He has that like uh, maybe like <clears throat> Mamba mentality, kind of that like the Joe Cool smoking mm-hmm. cigars kind of had. I think there's like a he's a fan favorite to where. People want to put him in that tier, and if you make a Super Bowl, like they're gonna put him in. I that don't know tier. how you're not. Yeah, like, I agree. Like the only thing, the only thing stopping us from putting him in there is that like he's I don't think rookie. we've seen enough yet. Yeah, right. but like he's done everything, just not on a long enough time frame. But even if he does the run, like he's done it without Tank Dell, like they're not at 100. percent They're not. I can't stop thinking about that opening throw to Nico last game. It's like yeah, the first play drop back 75 yards. I was hype, and then I was like, oh, we all have. You Nico know what's crazy Stroud. about that too is that like I feel like at this point. Defenses know what the Texans want to do, and they can't stop it. They can't stop Nico Collins. That, that's the thing. Like, I, I can't imagine the Browns aren't able to stop this. Like, I mean, they're not one dimensional, I guess, because Stroud's just. But that's so how good. I felt about like Jamar Chase. Like, oh, just yuck it up to him yeah. on the Bengals, and it just didn't matter. Right. I, I, I do. I, I'm not comparing them exactly because I do think the Bengals are better. Like, Burrow and Chase are a much better duo than Stroud and Collins as of right now, but it's still there. To I think they're kind of like a toned down Walmart uh, version. Cowboys team where it's like. Oh. Lamb is like their primary offense. They don't, they can't really run the ball efficiently. 
Um, but, you know, Dak and Stroud are both having good seasons. Like, we all kind of know what they want to do. It's just super fucking hard to stop. So Some dudes are just playmakers. Yeah. Um, with that said, I am going Browns. I think they get it done here. I just, I just trust the veterans. It's a different animal once you're in playoffs. It feels a little bit like Texans blew their load last week. Um, Browns are coming off a week of rest. I'm, I'm rocking going. with Hugh. You're going Houston. Yeah. I'm going Browns. You're going Cleveland. Yeah. Um, any any feelings on the total, which is at a moderate 44? It's trending up a little bit. And like I said, with these big play possibilities, if I had to go one way, I think I would take the over. Like I'm kind of thinking points could be scored here, even with these nice yeah. defenses. I'd lean there too. I don't know if Flacco's been in a low scoring yet. Yeah, really, okay. honestly. Um, speaking about Flacco, quickly touching on some player props here. I wrote down this question. Are markets underrating Joe Flacco? We've seen nothing but greatness from Flacco this year, and yet he's at 200 and around 70 passing yards as his line. He's gone oh over that. So underrated. <laughs> but, but, okay, listen to this. He's hit it four out of his last five, four out of his last four, and he's crushing this line. It's like 360. It's 320. And these are some pretty good teams, like the Jets. You played Houston already, too. They've already With played Houston. Stroud, though. It was a, yeah. How much? How many yards did Flacco put up? Uh, like yeah. 330. It was a good game for Flacco. I mean, one and a half passing touchdowns, like that's the normal line you're going to get for a quarterback, but he has yet to miss it. That I think I like that more than the yards. You like that more than the yards? Yeah. Okay. I think so. It's just so, so many, regardless of who it is, to take the over. Like, it doesn't matter the QB you pair up 270 with. It's a lot. It that is a lot. That feels fucking... I tell you what, I'm, uh, I don't remember, what did I exactly take? What I have in play right now is half a unit on over one and a half passing touchdowns, and then the other half unit on 37 and a half pass attempts. Mm. Because he is in that middle 40 range so far. Obviously, like, That's a lot too, but I guess that's where he's Yeah, all of yeah. his lines are like up there, but he just be crushing them, dude. Yeah, yeah they, I mean, they're comfortable fucking running it through him, so. Yeah. Joe Flacco overs. Do you think, I think they you go into the playoffs with the same thing, like just let him cook? Do you think they try and tone him down? Or like, no. Let's just hope he does it. This Again. is not the time you put Flacco on a leash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is time to unleash. Yeah. If we want to move over to Underdog, Underdog's got all those lines that I was talking about for Flacco. I think any Flacco over is a good one. Do you guys have any uh, un- UD picks you like? Yeah. I, on the flip side, I really like Dalton Schultz over 37 and a half receiving yards because I was looking at the splits between when he plays with Tank Dell and without Tank Dell in the five games without him. Receptions move up a full reception. Targets move up a target and a half. Receiving yards move up almost a full 10 yards. So without Tank Dell, I think 37 and a half. His average with Tank Dell is 39. His average without is 48. So he's crushing that either way. And they did play Cleveland already. We've already seen 11 targets, 8 catches, 61 yards against them. Again, this is an indoor game. Weather needs to be factored in here. They're going to be slinging it around. C.J. Stroud's got Nico Collins, and he's got Dalton Schultz. He's been one of his favorite targets all year. 37 and a half just feels like a very low bar. Feels doable. I like it. Top seven tight end, according to gut. That's a low bar, too. Feels like a system tight end. A little, little bit. bit. But um, Last thing on this game. Uh, I took it earlier, so 20 to 1 isn't really the odds anymore. I believe it's closer to maybe like 16 to 1. But Browns to win the AFC. All right? I think if we're looking at the teams that can beat Baltimore to be the champ, you got to beat the champ type beat, you know? They've seen Baltimore multiple times. I think they have the defense to do it. Browns is a long shot to win AFC. I don't know. I don't hate it. I like it. Yeah. I put a half unit on it. Like All we right. said earlier, Joe Flacco going back to Baltimore, that's going to have some juice in him. Don't get Flacco juiced up now. He's already hot. It's going to be an insane storyline if yeah. Flacco yeah. goes back to Baltimore. That's going to be the greatest. Just for them, they're going to be so inspired to just crush his ass. Who would be more depressed? Ravens fans seeing Ravens fans getting beat by Flacco or Lions fans getting beat by Stafford? More depressed. Lions. More depressed. Definitely Lions. I think. Lions really? Fans. Being, de- I mean, beating uh, you. You like Flacco. I feel like if you're no, a, that's like Flacco. that's exactly that's why it makes it hurt more. But I think Flacco at least won one for you. So that, that's what I mean. Gratefulness. Yeah. Okay. It's like Stafford you, you went know. to another team and came back and wiped you in the playoffs, yeah. even though he didn't win anything for you. Do you? Th- well, I'll wait till we get the Lions game, but we could kick on. All right, let's move on to the next game here. We have the Miami Dolphins traveling to Kansas City. Bad weather game. One of the two bad weather Chill. games. Let Nick real, quick, Chill. real quickly, real quickly. Kansas City, <laughs> four and a half point favorites, 43 and a half over under. Weather man of the year, take us away. I'm just going to read this straight off my my weather source here. We got absolutely frigid. 
That was the that was the <laughs> term he used to start it off. Absolutely frigid. Actual temp should be around zero degrees at kickoff, if not below, and dropping well below zero as the game goes on. Ten to fifteen mile per hour wind will put feels like temperature around twenty to thirty degrees below zero. Temperature generally isn't a big concern to the game, but extreme cold is impactful, especially when adding in adding in wind to go along with it. This is the definition of extreme cold. First thing I'll say is like the weather storylines, I think a lot of the times are kind of overblown. And when everybody starts piling in on them, like that becomes a narrative of the entire game. Mm-hmm. It's I, feel like, I feel like it doesn't work always. I will say like, it's not like Kansas City's looking forward to a negative 30. Yeah, it goes either. both ways. No. Right. I think cold doesn't matter. Zero degrees. Nobody gives a fuck. These guys play through it. I think it's wind and wet that really matter and really can fuck up. A- yeah. I, I think... What this might do, I don't know if it'll fuck up the game, but I do think it'll probably swing the game plan a little bit. I think it'll be a game where they're both trying to like definitely establish a run. I think passing the ball could be like could be tough, a ne- damn near impossible. I think Miami can win it if they could get the run going. Like that's the key. It's not going to be Tyreek having superpowers. I think it's no. can you get the run game going? Are they at full strength? Mostert, Waddle. So Tyreke? full strength as in they'll play probably. Skill players, but yeah. do they feel full strength? Probably not. No. You know what's kind of funny is I think. Both these teams want to run the ball. Yeah. Even though you have Mahomes and even though you have, like, a great passing offense with Mike McDaniel, like, at this point, there's no receiver that Pat Mahone trusts. Travis Kelsey looks super washed. There's injuries to Waddle. There's injuries to Hill. Like, I think both teams, especially in this weather, like we said, just want to keep it on the ground. Yeah. I don't, like, I feel like at this point, Casey's best offense is running it through Pacheco. 100%. This, he might, like, what, what's, his, what's his rushing attempt line on this game? Um, I can look it up on UD. It's definitely up there, though. If it's like 15 and a half, I feel like it's an easy smash over. Usually they don't put him much higher than that. Um, UD does not have his rushing attempts up right now. I'll keep an eye on that line, though. Pacheco rushing attempts, I feel like they're going to have to run the ball through him. It was like, I don't know, like because Kelsey's kind of disappeared. Rashi Rice is their number one guy, but he's also a rookie. He's from... His like, line... He went to like SMU. It's warm weather. I don't know. Is he ready for this frigid I'll cold? say that, like, Kelsey's line's discount. Uh, discount. It's lower than normal. It's at 55. Kelsey's usually still sitting around 65, 70. Rashi got respect back to, like, at the end of the season, he was at the 65 range. He's still there Yeah. for this game. And I feel like his lower. line hasn't factored in the weather, as much as I like him. What's the spread on this game? Seven? Seven and a half? Four no, four. no, it's four and a half. Okay. It opened, like, at three, and then was, like, quickly down to three and a half, and then was slowly creeping up. I feel like spread-wise, like, I I really like Kansas City to win this game, but I just don't trust them to win by margin. Yeah, it's like I feel so good about KC Moneyline, and somehow (laughs) the three-point spread (laughs) makes me feel horrible about it. Yeah, at that point, it's like I'm out. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting. These two teams faced in a neutral site earlier this year. That's and right. That was a Germany game. That was right? a Germany game. So Kansas good. City closed as two and a half point favorites. The total was like 51 and a half. And Miami was able to run the ball kind of like later on in the game. Kansas City jumped out to a lead. But uh, Miami did a good job limiting Rashi Rice and Travis Kelsey in the past game. But now their defense is super banged up. They don't have Chubb. They don't have Phillips. It's a surprisingly deep defense because I still feel like they got guys like Ramsey and Wilkins who can do some damage. But does them being on like a losing streak mean anything? Like, oh, they got to turn it around. Is that worth anything? I don't. I I don't think so because (laughs) it just kind of felt like they like it it almost felt to a a point earlier on. Like I don't know, week fucking like twelve or thirteen that we were so sure that they were making the playoffs that it was like they're allowed to just, like, sit back and relax a little bit, you know, like, get mm-hmm. complacent before the playoffs just because there's no chance of them not making it. It's like Miami, I think they ever like busted their nuts so early. Drop that, like, Titans game. There is, like, the momentum just, just the like, soul was ripped out of that team. Also, like, with those th- with that number of injuries, though, too, like, yeah, it takes a toll in the locker room eventually. Yeah. It's like all those dudes that you just spent six months with, like, training every single day, like your best friends, torn ACL, torn ACL, Achilles, you know, like, all going down. It's like mm-hmm. the, the level of play is like, so much – Further down, it's even like every week, Tyreek not injury. being able to be a superhero every week is like it's, it's just not the same. Like it's, yeah. it was like, oh my god, he's gonna get two thousand. Even that took a step. Two back. It just feels like one of those dudes, like Jared Goff, who like can't play in the cold, or he's like he's from Hawaii, he goes to yeah. Alabama. It's like so you can be able to like fucking move it all in negative twenty. His <laughs> his like against the spread stats and straight up stats again or in cold weather games is not good. Yeah, that's I what mean, I mean. Like the more I talk about this, it's like Miami banged up. 
playing in this weather. Like, and you still don't trust Kansas City? No. Like, I don't trust him for shit. I mean, I still like Casey a lot. What's okay. Mahomes' rushing yard line? Okay, so I did write that one down. It's at 25 and a half, which feels really high. I like it. Like, I'll go really? over, I think, yeah. Okay. Let Playoffs, me. that's like his go-to, I feel like. Third down, oh my God. Yeah, he He's always rips so up like 17-yard runs and shit. But this year, Patrick Mahomes has only gone over, sorry, it's it's more like 28 and a half. Okay. But either way, he's only gone over that line two out of his last 10 games. There was that one game against the Raiders where he hit like 50 yards. So I think like you kind of want to put his line in the high 20s because you know he has that in his bag. And you also don't trust the rest of this offense. So it's like maybe you do really need Patrick Mahomes to do it on the ground. But it just feels like for a normal Kansas City game, that's so high. What's the total? On the total game? is like 44. About the same as the Browns? Yeah, which is, wow. w- yeah, isn't that kind of weird? The weather. <laughs> the weather. <laughs> I mean, it's the weather and it's the injuries to the offense and the well, lack that, of weapons. That and Kansas we saw City them has. play this year, and it just wasn't, like, super explosive. Like, it w- it w- that was supposed to be, like, a huge, oh, my God, this might go over 50, and it, that was a right. letdown. But you know what? It, it's kind of interesting. It's like uh, we talked earlier in the season about, like, how unders just – feel like they always hit in those Germany games, right? Mm -hmm. But we still felt comfortable putting it up at 51. Now we have bad weather, and it's like we're putting it all the way down to, like, 43 and a half. It's like, Do you think those things kind of equate, though, where it's, like, bad weather or going overseas? The the injuries maybe play into it to a big part, too. I think it's a great line. They fucking nailed it, clearly. That's their (laughs) job, but... So I, I was I looking back over the play, last playoff games. His rushing yardage line last eight. year, 44, but the two games were at 8-8, 19, 69, 29, 33, 5 He He just had, like, playoff games, I feel like, really boost his, his yardage totals. Like, he definitely got it in his bag. And I almost feel like if you're moving the game plan around, like, he doesn't trust his receivers. I could see him moving around a lot. Yeah. So I do have an official bet on this game. I took the under of 44 and a half. Um I wish I got it earlier, obviously, when it was up at 47. I don't know if I'd take it again. Like, I don't <laughs> feel great about it. A lot of times I make bets early in the week, and as the week goes on, I'm like, yeah, I like it. Bet another bet another unit on it. And by the end of the week, that's how I have way too much stock on, like, the Panthers and the Bears. Mm-hmm. This time that's I think three I'm— three rounds worth. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, I don't think I'd take it much lower than 44. Again, these are still—Miami, at least, is still an explosive offense if they're healthy— you want to believe in Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, maybe coming off a little bit of a bye week. Eh, they, a they were that, resting. That matters. I don't, I don't know how much you can, like, forecast the next week and plan for it, but um, some quick stats here. Uh, second half unders in Kansas City games are 15-2. and two. Do you remember when we were doing slips and it was like every week I was just taking Kansas City unders? I was like, dude, it's like week yeah. three now. They haven't scored a second half point. And um, – Fourth quarters going along that 16 and one in the unders. Mahomes is 36 22 to the under in home games. And over the last two seasons, he is the most profitable home quarterback to the under. So we have a questionable offense in Kansas City, an injured offense in Miami. Maybe a uh, defensive Steve Spagnola comes out to play. Maybe this is his time, Leo right? Chanel, George Karloftis. Who says no? So what's what are the Chiefs offs to win at all? You know, it's kind of long. I don't remember if I was looking at um, they got AFC be, or Super Bowl, but I think it was see. AFC is ten to one. Really? Yeah, that feels kind of tempting. No? It was kind of tempting, but I also I just hate this Kansas City team. Yeah, ten to <sighs> one feels crazy. I yeah, I, I they're still my pick. To win the whole thing. Do you guys have any UD picks for this game? I do have one going off of Pacheco, and make sure that if you are not an underdog, you get on there. They got free squares as well. So if you get on there and use promo code BDG, you will get a free .5 Patrick Mahomes passing yard line. Scoop it up right now. I'm taking the Pacheco over 65 and a half rushing yards. I just think this offense is going to run through him. He's a psychopath, and he's built for this type of game. Mm-hmm. Like he's going to, you know, he's going out there in like a tank top. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's gonna lose his fucking so angry. mind. So, yeah, so I like the 65 and a half rushing yards. Uh, I, I don't know what they have. They don't have his rushing attempts on here, but like, I, I just imagine their entire game plan is going to run through him. Other books have it at 15 and a half. It is juiced to the over, though. So okay. I'd watch out for that. I do have a split touchdown bet. Half unit on Mostert, half on Hill. Both of these guys are plus money to score. 
Well, they're yeah. both around like 130. I don't know if that's because, you know, people are assuming that if they do play, they're going to be hobbled a little bit. Maybe they just don't think Miami's going to be scoring that often. But these are guys. It doesn't really add up to the total because the total still says there's going to be points. I mean, they're projecting. Yeah, they're projecting about 20 points it's just, for well, Miami. What percentage of touchdowns this year for Miami have gone through those two? That's what I'm Probably saying. Probably 85%. Yeah. And if you can get both of them at plus money, yeah. only one hits you still come out with a small profit, you know? Yeah. Chance both hit, then you then you win big. So that's what I'm taking on underdog. They're both spiced up. 1.25 spicy chili pepper to score. They gave Tyreek a spicy? They gave Tyreek a spicy, dude. Damn. I know. Crazy. It's nice. So uh, those are some. T- those are the three plays that I like. The under, 44 and a half, and then those two, Mostert and Tyreek Hill, to score. I like uh, Kelsey. His line is at like 56 and a half. I think it was 55 earlier today. Nick this Mahomes, season, he's just going to go back to old reliable. Yeah, this season, even in a bad year, he's still averaging 66 yards a game. And in the playoffs, he completely steps up with Mahomes. He averages 90 yards a game. Dang. Whether or not that that's just too small of a line. Do you have a – do you guys ever take – they okay, so they have Kelsey at five and a half receptions. But then they have his higher or lower for first downs at three. I've looked at them. I never mess with first downs. I've done tempting. first downs before. It is, too. Really frustrating when you watch fucking game and your guy catches like an eight yard fucking pass and mm-hmm. goes down. Kelsey feels like a first down machine though. Like three first downs, I feel like that's a pretty that good. That feels really good to hit the push. Yeah, uh, <laughs> to hit the push. I don't know. I like the. I feel like he. I feel like if he's catching five passes, six passes, three of them are going for first downs minimum. You got to imagine on third down, that's where you know uh, Patrick Mahomes is looking. So yeah. I wonder if do what's this do thing? touchdown score as first downs. That's what I was. gonna I say. I think if it it has to pass, it can't be like first and goal. Really. Yeah, that I, th- make I think sense. it. I, no, I don't think that's a. Fir- it has to like reset. I go, it's got to be from like the twelve yard line. Right. Touchdown. I don't know. I don't know if that's right though. That's what I just made up right now. Okay. That's how okay. I would grade it if I was the books. Right. Kelsey, so. Kelsey scoring from twenty seven right. yard out. Exactly. All right. I, I like Kelsey three first downs. Lock Anything else in. on this game? Should we move on? All right. Next game, we got the Steelers. Pass next. No, I like this game. I like this game a lot. Really? <laughs> There's a lot of UD plays I got for this one. <laughs> so, the All Steelers right. are going to Buffalo. Um, they are 10-point dogs. One of the biggest dogs we've seen. Last time a 10-point dog in Wild Kyle round, the Tennessee Titans to the Baltimore Ravens. Guess who won mm. that game? Guess who won that game? I, I know who won. You know who won? <laughs> you know it ain't the Ravens? Guess who's going to win this game? The Steelers, massive dogs. Um, a lot of it has to do with no T.J. Watt. That really put a damper on things yeah, and their, their defense in general. Um, total is absolutely fallen because this is, once again, cold, windy, potentially some snow, too. Temps will be in the 20s with sustained winds around 15 and gusts around 30. Big gusts. But I will say both of these teams are kind of built for this this weather. Like, this is like what you – this this if you play in Pittsburgh, if you play in Buffalo – this is the type of weather you should expect in December, January. This is, this is what the old Steelers are built for. Yeah, sure. I shouldn't mean I shouldn't say built for. Look, I meant like you should be used to this. Yeah. I don't want to insinuate anything, but are the Steelers actually the better built team for this? They've been running the ball really nicely for the last couple of weeks. Super fair question. The Bills can run the ball too, though. They can run it, but if we were to put them in a vacuum, like who actually runs the ball better? Because um, Najee Harris has been. Najee's been Najee's great. Been doing, Warren's doing been it. really efficient too. And that chart I put in the Slack before that you said can't go on TikTok because people won't be able to <laughs> comprehend it was basically uh, on the thirty third team website. You go to like the edge. They also have another section that goes into trenches. So they look at O line D line matchups and the matchup for the Bills versus the run and the P- Pittsburgh versus the run. Like Pittsburgh offense has a huge advantage on the ground in terms of running the ball. So I think that makes sense, especially with the temperature and everything. So it's kind of like even though they lost T.J. Watt, he's going to be there in spirit through the snow. T.J. Watt is the weather in this game. I don't know about all that. Do you I, see the Steelers are like since they got Watt, they're like 1-10 in 10 when he doesn't play? Yeah. Oh, they're saw horrible. That. It's yeah. crazy. Watt. I like, think I, I – Bro. That's like a QB stat. So would weird. you take the Bills to eat the points in this one? I don't have the balls to do that, but if I had to pick a side, I would take the points with the Steelers, mostly because of the weather. If, like, game time comes around and it's like, oh, it's going to be more clear than we expected, Mm -hmm. winds are kind of down, it's going to be more dry, ain't no fucking way I'm taking the Steelers. Bills have the potential to blow the back out of the Steelers. Yeah. But I do think weather can be the equalizer Do you think we see any light from Diggs? 
Like, even last week, we saw a little bit, but we just saw a little bit because of how bad it's been. Like, do you think we see yeah, peak digs? I yeah. I think – um he, yeah, he had, a, like, a decent game last game. I think Howland kind of overthrew him by, like, two yards on a really – it could have went, like, eight for 160 in a touchdown, I think, but that's, like, the story of fucking wide mm-hmm. receivers all the time. Um, I mean, if they need, if they're going to make a run, it's got to – he's got to be a big part of it. Big Gabe Davis week? Ain't no way, dude. No – if Wait, the weather it, holds up, they're not hurt? throwing the ball down the field. Gabe might be out. He might be. Trent Sherfield came in for him and stole a touchdown from him. Injuries I don't pay attention to anymore. Go. I feel like Buffalo – this is one of those games where they're, like, we're so heavily – expected to win that we just we just, it's like we're not playing to dominate we're playing just not to lose I think that's what Buffalo's gonna do I I totally agree and unlike last year where they destroyed bad teams I think this year they kind of play down to competition a little bit and maybe that's skewed because they started slow and now they're like starting to get things right a little bit but yeah I also kind of believe that narrative works because it's not really been the Bills' offense that has carried them through this winning streak. It's been their defense. So they, I think they've they stepped up for sure. Yeah, they just play closer games, which also kind of tends to lends itself to the Steelers plus ten. Yeah, I kind of like the Steelers getting points here. The Bills should definitely win, but I do I, I do think it it's kept relatively close just because the matchup and the weather is and it, everything. Is Minka out too? Am I making that up? I haven't seen anything about Minka. This just doesn't feel um, like all this is adding up to my favorite underdog take which is Najee Harris over 15 and a half rushing attempts look back to when Matt Canada was fired averaging 18 carries per game in the six weeks afterward and you look at the last three games three game winning streak to get into the playoffs 19 26 and 27 carries 24 carries a game over the last three games this is like not the game that you're trying to rely on Mason Rudolph for like they've seen what they got in Najee we got a workhorse Let's fucking kill him. Let's run him into the ground for three games and see what we can get out of it. So, Najee, the run offense, Bills run defense. I think it all adds up for Najee to easily see 16, 17, 18 carries. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. On the other side of the ball, Josh Allen rushing attempts. Line set at eight and a half. He's hit this in four of his last six games. He's coming off games of 15 rushing attempts and 11 of rushing attempts. Again, bad weather. You got to keep it on the ground. Ever since Joe Brady... Their new OC has taken over. He has made this offense much more run heavy and sneaky, sneaky uh, addition to this because they're heavy favorites. Lenny? No, not Lenny. This, that's not where I'm going. I'm not never going to go <laughs> to Lenny. Where I'm going, let's say it's late in the fourth quarter. Josh Allen sitting at seven rushing attempts. The Bills are blowing out the Steelers. Mason Rudolph trying to get some garbage time touchdown, throws a pick. Two minutes left. Bills have the ball. What do they do? Kneel. Victory formation. Mm. Kneel it once, seven rushing it. Kneel it twice, somehow gets to nine. I did my math wrong there, but it doesn't matter. So That counts? Yeah. It's taking kind of a knee, that counts as a rushing attempt. Jeez. So, I don't know. I think, I, I think like my hack. Best, right? Dude, this is an infinite his money base, His lines basically at like six. It does. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but like... I feel like it so rarely works out where you're like at two minutes with right. like yeah, where you yeah. actually get three. You usually get like maybe one Small or something. Small chance, but a possibility. Yeah. Facts. It's you got ju- one? It's the juice. No? I don't got anything for this one. Okay, well, real quickly. Diggs at 61, still kind of still kind of low. I don't know. I just don't know how much passing is going to be in this. But if you do want to take someone as a receiver, I wrote down Jalen Warren, 18 and a half receiving yards or – Three and a half reception. I feel like Jalen Warren has kind of Jesus. taken more of like a, a receiving back role ever since Najee's been like doing it on the ground. And I feel like if he gets three catches, he's getting nineteen yards. Yeah. I think three so and a half feels high though. I wouldn't take the more on that no. reception. No. You'd go you'd rather do yards eighteen and a half? Yeah, I honestly I don't know if I feel great about that. I don't okay, know. Well, I get, they have to go through their running back, so yeah. They have to go through it, and Jalen Warren has hit this in five of his last five games. Yeah, I just think it's bad weather. I kinda short like him passes. Too. Like, game script-wise, that the Bills are leading, so they're just doing some two-minute BS. He gets mm-hmm. some garbage time shit. I think Jalen Warren has it in his bag to go over 18 for sure. That was another one I was considering. No, I like it, too, because the, the weather does play into, like, dump-off mode, I think, a lot. Yeah. yeah. In my bag, yo. Hi. Last prop I'll throw out there. If the weather does end up clearing up a little bit, and, you know, we don't, we don't get any snow, nothing crazy like that, Dalton Kincaid at 36 and a half yards. Back-to-back games, 87, 84. Like, he's become a real weapon in this offense for Josh Allen in at least the passing game. So, I don't know if I like it so much if the weather's going to be bad, but if it if things change. What line did you like? Sorry. Dalton Kincaid, 36 and a half receiving. 35, Dalton. Oh, no, and that was 35. Uh, I feel like he's so schizophrenic still right now. Like, I don't. 
I feel like as of recent though, like he's for sure su- succeeded. Uh, yeah, I mean he's Dawson awesome. He's, Knox. Yeah, he's he's a he's a good player, and I hope Knox is fucking. Out I hope they there. ship him Gone. before Knox. Yeah, I want him out. All right, those are the last of the plays. All right, moving on to the Sunday games. No, that was a Sunday game. Never mind. Moving on to the next Sunday game, we have the Green Bay Packers heading to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Was it a catch? World may never know. What we do know, though, is that the spread, as I'm looking at it right now, looks like it has fallen to seven. All week, it was at seven and a half. I'm looking through books here. DK, seven. DraftKings, seven. Caesars, seven. Do you seven. think they should have added the seven seed? You see seven seeds are 0 and six since they added it. And it feels like this I mean, one, it's like a Small again. sample size, but. Yeah. It's always a shit team. Every year going in, I'm like, thank God there's seven or else someone would get left out. And even the seventh, like the, going into the AFC this year, I was like, damn, even with seven, someone's getting left. And now it's disappointing as fuck. Yeah. I, I don't know. I I'd think, be fine if they didn't have it. I think um, I think with playoffs, though, you can get I hot mean, at cool. the right time. Yeah. Like it is one game for the rest of your lives. So anything can really happen here. Yeah. I personally, <laughs> going off that, though, I think the Packers might get shellacked here. I think there's blowout potential that's pretty high for the Cowboys. This, yeah. yeah, this is almost another like Houston, Cleveland, where like Dallas has been, Dallas has been in these situations quite a few times now over the last few years. Like they took out, you know, Tampa, Tampa Bay when it was like Brady. Green Bay is really hot right now, so I'd imagine a lot of the money's probably pouring onto them. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I feel I, like I, th- I don't think Packers are. They're definitely not as favored of a dog as like Houston and the Rams are. Say that again. The Packers aren't as. I'm, when I say fa- like they're not as uh, publicly backed as a dog mm. as Houston and the Rams. Interesting. Yeah, I mean the Cowboys. For good are reason, though. Quote unquote, America's team. Like they're always going to get cash going to them. Here's what I'm concerned about with the Packers. Their defense has not been great these last five weeks. 27th in EPA per play, 26th in success rate, and they're going up against Tommy DeVito and the Giants, Baker and the Bucks. Bryce Young, a mixture of Jaron Hall and Nick Mullins. They Justin lost a couple Fields. of those, too. Jesus dude, Christ. Dude, that's what I'm saying. They have had a buttery soft schedule, and they are performing bad. There is literally not a bigger delta in talent of now going to Dallas, facing the Cowboys, where at home, Dallas is averaging 37 points per game. Only one time they have scored less than 30 at home. I just think Joe Barry's defense is going to get so exposed here. He's going to be fired and permanently fired. Maybe he never steps rehired. up. <laughs> <laughs> what in the fuck he steps up to the plate. <laughs> Maybe he decides, no, I'm going to be good now. Yeah. yeah, no, it's not great. Dallas's offense is so good. It's like at home. It too, feels like the first time difference. in like five years that I actually believe that they're a good offense. You know, like they've had numbers before and like put up good numbers and Dak's put up good stats, but I've always been like, eh. They're just one game away from going back to, like, the old Dallas Cowboys when their offense feels sustainable right now. We'll yeah. say, though, Aaron Jones, since he's returned from injury, leads the NFL in rushing yards. Look, they, they're they going to be a healthy offense this time. You know, yeah. I think even Christian Watson's getting Watson's back in the mix. Back. M- Musgrave was activated from, I don't really think he's great, but, like, anyways, they got full semi-full strength. Right. Some of their parts. I feel and like everyone's in on love now, and then they're going to get their ass beat, and people are going to just be down on them again. Should they move on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's so what's going No, happen. Love's awesome. It, it, it's like a bad version of Houston where it's like, all right, it was a very cool story, yeah. but let's reload for next year kind of thing. It, Love's been great. He hasn't really faced great defenses in the last, like, one or two months, but he's performed. I just he's think a fucking beast. He's good. I do like him. We got the two passing touchdown leaders going head-to-head. Yeah, but, I mean, Dallas defense has had its holes, but – I just don't see any way that Jordan Love keeps up against the Dallas defense while Dak's going up against the Packers. Yeah, defense. they don't they don't have any leash. Like he's got no room for error whatsoever, and it's not. And they're playing a very good defense, so very likely to have errors. Yeah, I mean, just going back on it real quick, Jordan Love he's performed well, but we're talking about some dead teams here, like Jordan like Love. Like I said, the Giants, the Panthers. At two and a half sacks, I feel like he'll get sacked three times. I mean. The Packers' offensive line has been nice. I don't know if they've really Mike faced. Goodell. Yeah, they haven't faced someone like Parsons, but damn, yeah, Aaron Jones' lines at seventy-two rushing yards, pretty good like there. Popping the fuck off as well. We also got. We haven't really been touching much on the revenge game narrative, but Mike McCarthy going up against his old team, the Packers. Mm-hmm. The one thing that does scare me is that I feel like Mike McCarthy does have a clenched butthole during these like big games where he's like needs to come through. He. His I feel like when like he loses his confidence. When yeah. he's the favorite, though, he's got it. 
Like when maybe. he's when he should win, he does. But when it's like maybe okay, so any 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 chance that he plays scared, they run the offense through like fucking Tony Pollard. Then that 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 I think would be the only way that Jordan Love stays in this game. Just a little bit of love magic. They if they try to run through Pollard, they fail to score a bunch of times. Mike McCarthy could be the reason. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I feel like could be the truth. Last year. He was pretty much, or I think that was two years ago. Whenever Dak decided to run it on, like, whenever they called a QB draw while the clock was running out in the fourth quarter. I feel like that was last year, no? I can't remember if that was last year or two. But either way, Mike McCarthy has, like, not been great at the end of games calling plays. So that definitely scares me. My favorite bet here is taking the over of 29.5 points scored by the Dallas Cowboys. I'm taking their team total. I'm taking the over. I What's don't the overall total? It's like 50. It's uh, 50 and a half. I mean, look, I don't know if Jordan Love and the Packers can keep pace with them. Maybe they can, maybe they can't, but I feel so confident that the Dallas Cowboys are scoring a boatload of points this week. All right, Dan. Dude, Andrews Carlson at two and a half extra points. I mean, he's plus money, but I don't know if they're scoring three yuddies. Spicy. One player prop that I do like, talked about this one a little earlier, Rico Dowell, four and a half receiving yards. Over, under? I'm taking the over. That's one catch for Rico. He does it. <laughs> I'm going to take the under on four and a half. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, he's done it in, I think, six out of his seven home games. Like we said, we think Dak's going to be throwing the ball a lot. Like, it's just it's a quick dump off to Rico. Get my boy Rico the ball, and we're chilling. Yeah, the, the prop I took in this game, which I'm like, I don't feel great about, but I took the under on Jaden Reed's 49 and a half receiving yards because his numbers just drop so heavily when Christian Watson and they're at full strength and, and everyone's on the field. Uh, what I do think I would probably pivot to if I didn't want to go that route is Tucker Craft. I think Tucker Craft's a better tight end than Luke Musgrave is, and I think he'll probably be the starter next year. Damn. He's at 23 and a half receiving yards. I mean, he's put up better stats over the last like month and a half than Luke Musgrave did at any point in the beginning of the year. 23 and a half, I feel like, I mean, he's rocked that. I can only see the last three games. He went over that the last three games, but I think he did that probably the last like five or six in a row. I think the only reason it's this low is because Musgrave was finally back and active last week, but I don't think they're giving that job back to Musgrave right away. I think Kraft will be like a big part of this offense going forward. Yeah. Good player. It's a good problem to have for the Packers, two good yeah. young tight ends. But yeah. one of in the fetal, I took both of them in oh, that's nice. in our draft. Yeah, that's real nice. I mean, <laughs> they <laughs> might both just suck. Nah, they might both be goaded. Maybe nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's real nice. <laughs> Another no. question I have in this game is how the fuck. Does the Packers stop CD? Is CD Lamb going to score two touchdowns? Dude, the line is at a hundred. His what line is to Man. score. No, oh, his receiving. Oh, oh, oh I see. Makes sense. Saying. I mean, dude, I've I've seen a lot of like tweets. Like we did the video on predicting the first round of fantasy drafts next year. Mm-hmm. Someone like this was like a month ago, and someone was like, "This is what I predict it's going to be." Not my rankings, but like what it's going to be. I'm seeing a lot of those now. It's like top five. No, no, no. Like I've seen him at the 101 in like Damn. the majority of them. I'm like, I'm not doing that, but, like, whoa. I mean, he's been unbelievably hot the last two yeah, months, yeah. basically yeah, straight. So every game is like a buck 25 and a touchdown. Yeah. You know? That's why I'm hoping you guys will convince me to sprinkle a little bit on him to score two touchdowns at plus 420. I mean, plus 420 for two? You got me. I'm in. <laughs> you so got me. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how you stop him. It's like Jair sticks to him the entire game, plus a safety over the top, I guess, but unstoppable. Yeah. Joe Barry, what's he going to do? Step up. Facts. He so wants you, to keep his job. <laughs> if Joe Barry, w- if the Packers win, Joe Barry keeps his job. He's due for a good game. I don't. I just. <laughs> I don't think there's any way the Packers. Would you lay seven and a half though with Dallas? Yeah, I don't I'd know probably if probably eat the points. You would eat the points. I don't hate that at all. I don't know if I would do it. I like the team total way more, but like if I had to pick a side, I think I'm laying seven with Dallas. Seven and a half. Mm, I think. I think I take the points. It's fair. It's fair. It's it is a lot playoff game. Yeah. But yeah, like like we said, it's um. Dallas is going to have their way on offense, so excited to see that one. Let's move to the final game of Sunday. What's wrong, Jamo? There you go. This is your game, Jamo. I know. I'm excited about this. This one. is your game. The Los Angeles Rams. Matthew Stafford heading back to Detroit to take on Jared Goff, the forgotten son of Sean McVay. So I've been thinking. I think the Lions would be more disappointed than the Ravens fans. You're right. I think so too. If if you're Goff and you lose this, like, how do you how do you look in a mirror? Yeah, I think this is going to be like a one of 
a couple. I guess he like has the, a couple, but like a career defining game for him. And yeah. it's like a wild card game, you know? Like you think like his it's like he, it was, he's going like to become one of two people. Yeah, yes. Like, villain origin story starts here. Like, he's done after this. <laughs> is. Like, it's, it's downhill. It's after so this. bad. Yeah. But the spread, Even if he wins, it's more like a, phew, like a relief right, rather than, right. a, like, he's him. No, yeah. I, I think I think it'd be more than a relief. I think that, again, I think it's, like, a career-defining. Like, I, yes. think, I think Sean McVay has the chance to, like, wipe away everything he's done. As a Detroit Lions. What if what yeah, if they know if win? Sense, but yeah, but it's like just Monty and Gibbs just fucking ate. Like That's Goff. Fine. Goff think, just yeah, wants I to think win. It's fine. That's it. Right. He doesn't need the stats. No Laporta. No Laporta. That's huge. That's and Rams kind of coming off a bye week. Like the Lions were legitimately playing that game. Meanwhile, yeah. Rams were resting. Yeah. So that does not go in the favor of the Lions. What also I don't think goes in the favor of the Lions is their defense. For some reason, the Lions defense feels like a polarizing topic. You know, you go on the internet and be like, Lions defense sucks. You'll have people, like, chewing your ass out for that. You can say the opposite, and you'll get the same response, right? Like, I don't know. I feel like it's pretty understood their secondary is ass. Really? I, I yeah, think I think so. they're I, a bad I passing think it, defense. I think it is, too. No, I agree with that. I just feel like, you know, you got people on the internet trying to defend Lions defense. doesn't matter. That's wild, yeah. What I, think, I mean, it's a great matchup for the Rams, having 100%. a bad secondary. Mm-hmm. I just think – or so, some numbers – uh, make the Lions defense look better than they really are because you've had incidents where teams have been able to march down the field on the Lions defense, but then they didn't convert to points. We've had the C.D. Lamb fumble through the end zone. Nick Mullins threw three red zone interceptions. Dak's even thrown a red zone interception. Like, this Lions defense, I feel like, has been getting super lucky with limiting the damage, but it feels like they're due to really you, explode. Let the calling flood the Rams here? Lose. What? You calling the Rams win right now? I, I'm on the Rams money line for sure. Mm. I like the Rams here. What is it? What's the spread? Three. I think it's more so like I want them to win rather than I think they will. Like if my life depended on picking the winner, I think I'd go with Detroit. I you, don't know, you, man. you want the Rams to win? Yeah. Why? Just like Stafford. Here's here's the problem that I have. Why? I'm just like I feel like a bad person wanting, like rooting against Jared Goff. I feel like a bully. Do you think if if Goff loses, are the Lions now in the position that the Rams are with them? Like, oh, he's good but not good enough to win it all. Damn, he just gets recycled again. I could totally see it. To the Falks? Like, this is what he was. Happens again. Yeah. Like, he was good, and he got him to the playoffs. I think he's been better in Detroit than he was in the – He it, Statistically, he was really good with the Rams, but I don't think he was ever playing to the level that he is now. He has, He's, like, inconsistent. He has, like, really bad games, but I feel more comfortable with him knowing who he is as a quarterback in Detroit than I did in L.A., I think. Or are you going to be saying that a week from now when he gets I think he's still in the same the tier he was. We just see it. More now. We see it more clearly. I think he's like more consistently in that tier. Whereas, like when he was with the Rams, he would put up because McVay's offense that was like when it was first introduced and it was running through the. It was almost like Mike Daniel when he started this year. Mm-hmm. So it felt like Goff's like, oh, maybe his ceiling's like, you know, up. Like he threw for like forty eight hundred yards one year, I think. And after that, it was like, whoa, like maybe Goff is worthy of that one two pick where he went. But now it's like we clearly know he's not there. He's kind of settled in, I think, to where he is in that twelve to fifteen ish QB range. I think that's fair. I don't even but know. Po- I don't remember what point I was making, but I just like Jared Goff, and I don't. I don't think I want him to but lose. But I, I just think that goes to the other point: is like twelve to fifteen sometimes isn't enough. You need yeah. top oh, eight. Okay. Oh, you were asking like, yeah. Do they ask the question? I don't know. And, I, and I'm not saying like right now this off season, but it's definitely like got to be something in the back of your mind. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know if they take a real hard look at it this offseason. No, not at all. Because this was the first year that they took like it was like the last half of last year. They got better as a team. This was like, okay, we got to take the jump this year. And I think they did that, you know, with passing. What's the Do they have the any wild cap card? space to, like, make a move this offseason? I don't know. I feel like every team know. can just fucking yeah. f- make f- cap Fair. space somehow. I don't know what their draft capital is like. They just have their first round I pick. it's just standard. Yeah. Well, I mean, they added so many good pieces to the team this year. If you look at, like, what they did through the draft and just developing their players that I feel like another year in the same system, like, getting everybody meshed in, I, I don't think they've hit their ceiling with Jared Goff. No. I don't think you don't they don't have, think they're at their ceiling? I mean, their defense could be way better. Uh, okay, like that could be. I mean, as a so team, much. no, but they're as offense. a full team. Okay. Yeah, sure. I, I um, and and I don't know if we saw like, like maybe if they get a wide receiver. Like right? imagine a real wide receiver too. Like imagine Jamison Williams, full year actually develops into like a, a nice wide receiver too. Jameer Gibbs was not used for like the first half of the season realistically alongside with Mont. Like I think I think there's more upside to be unlocked. Like they could lose this year, and I still think that they can win a Super Bowl with Jared Goff. I think they could. I don't think it's going to be this week, though. This year. That's what I'm saying. Like they could week, lose though. to the Rams, and I'd still believe that they could win the Super Bowl with Jared Goff. 
because they could build a great team. It's okay, just, let me. They have everything to lose. Yeah. Like yeah. the Rams, they could lose, and it's like, ah. Yeah, they were never supposed to be here. Yeah. Anyways. Here's the situation I want to talk about, though, because I think Matthew Stafford is going to be lights out in this game against the terrible Lions defense. He's going back home. I think for him, pressure's off. Meanwhile, Jared Goff is a lot, lot like Mike McCarthy, where it's he's kind of puckered. Like this is almost like a must-win situation. But I think the Rams' defense plays a style of football that is going to give Jared Goff trouble. And I don't think there's any head coach that knows a quarterback more than Sean McVay mm-hmm. knows Jared Goff. That's fair. And so I think the problem is, is if you're the Lions, it would be nice to rely on Monty and Gibbs, which I think they're going to have success because. Normally, they play a lot of defenses that stack the box. That's not really the Rams. Maybe things change, but even if you do find a lot of success with Montgomery and Gibbs, if Matthew Stafford's lighting up your defense, he's going to force you in a shootout. Yeah. And it's almost like McVay is pulling in Goff, being like, you have to play me, and I know how to beat you. That's mm-hmm. fair. And so if that's the situation, if it comes down to Goff needing a ball out and he can't, that's why I go back I'm to like so this excited, being such dude. a defining moment of his career where it's like that's where like floodgates open up for golf sometimes. Yeah. Where it's like I gotta do this and it's like pick, pick, pick. Right. Like three in a row and you're like, holy fuck. Yeah, we've we've seen that this year before with him, you know? Yeah. Even in the Dallas game, like he did it the second time he got a shot. They drove down the field and scored, but they he had a chance before the two minute drill, like the first play, just fucking hands on his knees after throwing a pick. Like It'd be an emotional soccer. game. I might I think I'm gonna cry probably. Oh, okay. I think so too. You're that I'm invested. crying right now thinking about it. Same. All right. With that being said, though, I'm taking Rams money line. I just I, I think the Lions defense ultimately is going to come back and bite them in the ass. Rams are getting hot right now, dude. This is this is why you let seven seeds in because if the Rams were to be the seven seed, you want them in there. They're no, getting hot because if the Rams are the seven seed, we still pick Dallas. I yeah, I guess that's fair. <laughs> it's different. But if it's not different. this is why well, you no, want, no, no, no. this is why you want okay. the seven seed. The Rams aren't the seven seed. <laughs> right, right. But I'm saying like let's say Rams were seven and Lions were two. Yeah. This is why you let the sure, seven seed in. Sure. Because I think the I think the Rams sure. can beat the Lions. I want them to. I'm I, taking the Lions. I really hope they win, but if I had to, Detroit. Any U D picks for this one? I feel like any either running back scoring a touchdown feels pretty I think, good. Yeah. I like that one too. I was looking at it a little bit. Cooper Cup to score a touchdown plus one twenty five. You know they're going to be doing damage through the air. Cup's yeah. probably the guy to do it. He's you done think, it in his four his last five. You think this is just like maybe a big Kyron day? Like just he's been cooking. Let him do it again. Like it's not going to be a Stafford versus I mean, Goff. His, his it's lines just, up at nineteen and a half rushing attempts. He's so good. It, yeah, he's literally so good, dude. This offense for the Rams has been so deadly. I think they're a lot like the Cowboys, just going to be able to do whatever the fuck they want. How about Goff, 33 and a half pass attempts? Again, yeah. I mean, I, I like the narrative of him going over it because, like we said, I think Matthew Stafford's going to drag him down in the mud and make him beat him through the air. Through the mud. Also, if Matthew Stafford's slinging it around the yard, Robinson, over 39 and a half receiving. He's kind Marcus? of a mer- Yeah, yeah DeMarcus a Robinson. Beast wide receiver he's, he's emerging as a dude. Mm-hmm. Hit five out of his last five, coming off a game of 92 yards against the Giants, 82 against New Orleans. DeMarcus Robinson, watch out for him. Sneaky over DeMarcus. This is the 2 2 game. <laughs> no, 2 2's been dead. This is a game where Stafford gets hurt in like the first quarter. Okay, enough. This is a Kobe Turner sacks game. Aiden Hutchinson, 0.5 sacks. That just. Even. Okay. See, I like taking those squares a lot. When Dude, dudes are averaging borderline seen a one a game. I have name like him in a while just sitting there. Double cheeked up. Five almost. sacks in his last two games. What well, are we doing? Yeah, dude, he's like. I feel like every time I bet on those, he always hits the over. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm down to ride with it. Let's do it. Hutch, it. Right. Hutchstein? Fuck it. Hutchstein? You know the Rams got the number one PFF guard? Mm. Couldn't even say it. Kevin Dotson? There you go. He's a guard. He's yeah, but he's not blocking Hutchstein. He's a tax. Ain't nobody doing that. Last thing I'll say on this. I did take the Rams 22-1 to one to win the NFC. Similar to the Browns. If someone's going to beat the 49ers, it could be the Rams, who have already seen them twice this year. I know McVay doesn't have a good track record against Shanahan, but I think they have the offensive power to carry Would them through some Would you be scared to play them? Yeah, I would feel uncomfortable for sure. I feel like Shanahan, like outside of the year the Rams won and all, I feel like Shanahan's got McVay's number. He does. And I think the Niners are such a juggernaut. Say, what, what were the scores of those games when they played this year? Uh, I mean, the scores, I think, are a little misleading. The Rams in the first matchup played pretty close until the end. And then they played again this last week where everybody was sitting. So looking at these NFC teams, like 
I actually think the Rams are the third best team in the NFC still left. I would put them behind Dallas and the Niners. I'd be I would rather face the Lions. I think Lions Niners builds a like a more hype. I think people would be like more excited. Like the spread would be closer. Mm-hmm. But I think inside, I would be more nervous of the yeah. Rams in terms of yeah. who's more likely to pull off I also, the upset. Yeah, yeah. I, I also think it's like, damn, if the Rams did beat the Lions, they're they're rolling. Right, like the momentum's there. Yeah, so that's the thing. If the Lions win, assuming that the Cowboys beat the Packers, next round it would be Philly Niners, or uh, sorry, I'm sp- I'm speaking like Niners Rams. Rams coming off a oh, win against the Lions, okay. like they're probably going to be having, they're going to have some momentum to them for sure. Mm-hmm. So. That's the last thing I'll throw out there for the Rams. We good to move on to Monday. Monday, we'll Sunday. We have the spiraling, depressed, banged up, gross. Ready to step up. Ready to come back. I don't know about that. Fam. Ready to Joe Barry themselves. <laughs> Nick Sirianni do. He's so <laughs> the so do Philadelphia Eagles heading to Tampa to take on the Bucks. Bucks three point home dogs forty three and a half over under. Weather is nice. Florida to go. I don't actually, I don't really know what the weather, weather is. Mm. It's not as nice as we may thought. Chance for rain. Latest models have slowed down the rain a bit, bringing it more so early Tuesday than late Monday when the game is, but we're still far enough out that I'm going to leave it as a chance for rain. We'll reevaluate as it gets closer. So how down bad is Philly right now? And yeah, this is, what's it, What's the spread? Spread is at three. It was lingering at two and a half. It got up to three. I think that's probably where the point where I take the Bucks, similar to like Browns Texans. If it's under three, I could see going to Philly. To be honest, I think it's Bucks or nothing. Like I'll take the Bucks plus the three. If it goes below that, I'm just not betting aside. I have no faith in this Philadelphia team. They, Jack said he's taking f- Tampa straight up. I like it. I, I think straight up. I think Baker Mayfield returned to practice. I think he's going to be good to go. Whether he's hobbled, I don't really know. But like. Man, Philly is just facing so many injuries on that offense. And What's good with Jalen Hurts' fucking finger, too? <laughs> I think he's just going to act Dude, like nothing happened. Did you see a picture it, of it? Yeah. It yeah. looks bad. That's, I, I think, like, we can't underplay that. Like, I, I feel like so that's either. actually a big thing. Yeah, Jalen Hurts ain't going to be 100%. I think they're going to lean on DeAndre Swift a lot. Yeah. This is so a big Dallas Goddard game. I think so. Always is. Always was. I think Philly wins. You You think Philly? Yeah. I almost I was about to say Philly pulls off an upset, but they are favored. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what it feels like at this point. They need a get right game, but they've needed that for weeks now. I mean, they're dropping the the Giants, they're dropping to the Cardinals. Like I know. They will drop to uh, anyone right now. They're too talented. Dude. Like there's no way their best players don't just step up and be like, We're not fucking losing at Tampa Bay. <laughs> yeah. You know what I you know what I think it is? I think Sirianni I don't know how or when, but he's is due. He, no, he's not due. <laughs> he lost the locker room. Yeah, it kind of feels like that, I guess. And I think Sirianni... But Jalen's going to spit a quote and have him back. Facts. I don't know, man. He needs to just look on Instagram for a little People while. People are going to just like look at his finger, though, and be like, <laughs> we can't even hear what you're saying, dog. What's good with your finger? Yeah. But I think uh, I think the problem with Sirianni, too, is that he's in that same like head coach mold as like uh, Dan Campbell, where he's kind of like the player's guy. He's like the motivator, but he doesn't actually run either side of the ball. You need like a good tactical person. Yeah, and you're relying too much on Matt Patricia to run your defense. Goat. And you're missing Shane Steichen running your offense. And it's just, I I just think this this Philly team is it's dead. They got no heartbeat. They got more. Like. If Sirianni the loses this game, kicking. how hot is his seat? Oh, not one I'd want to be in. You think he would have built up a little like – I um, feel like he, they'll just give him another one. Another How one. do you not? How do you? But I they're just w- gonna probably get rid of the OC and DC. Fair. I think that's. I think that's a good move to make. But I also, I wouldn't be so shocked to if Sirianni left because how were so often do we see coaches get fired after the playoffs? The one that comes to mind is Jim Harbaugh. It's not that it's a common thing, but that's engraved in my brain. He got fired after still making a playoff. Like the he same year? Fi- yeah, he was like NFC Championship, Super Bowl, NFC Championship, then he got fired. But he, he had beef with the owner. That was a little different. Um, yeah, I wonder, like, I guess the thing about Philly, and they made their Super Bowl run last year, and then I feel like this offseason, everyone was like, they're not going to have the same roster. You know, it's like all oh, the cornerbacks are going to be gone. Their whole defense is going to be gone. And they end up, like, re-signing everybody to, like, one-year deals. And it just, like, didn't really work out. And their defense went from pretty much elite last year. Remember how many sacks they had? They're, like, yeah. an unbelievable mm-hmm. pace or whatever. And they're, like, not even, obviously, close to that this year, which was the big fall off. Now, I kind of feel like all those dudes that they 
were able to get back after one year are now gone next year. And it's like the big like turnover that we were expecting coming into next year will be will be or coming into this year will be next year. And they'll then they'll probably be like a completely different team. Yeah. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I, I do feel like there's probably a lot of turnover and like changing okay. going to happen. Bradbury like, and Slay are just Right. Like they were like elite last year yeah. and just a lot of that could have been due to the fact that their front seven was the pass better. rush was like, so yeah. good, yeah, for sure. And I don't even, to be honest, I haven't paid close enough attention, but I, I'd imagine if, like, like they draft Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter, it's like these guys should be the future of the interior and be able to put pressure on any fucking offense. Have they lived up to that at all? I mean, Carter's favorite to win Defensive Rookie of the Year, isn't he? Is he? I don't know. He, I he so. is. I, he's had a nice rookie season. Will I think it's might. Davis has been disappointing. Okay. Yeah. Carter, I kind of looked at both of them nice. like, okay, they're both like playing again together. They're mm-hmm. just gonna in three years they'll be what they did. They were at Alabama again. I think Georgia. we're just obsessed with how fucking Georgia, physically right? built. Yeah, Davis is probably Georgia. Yeah, sorry, not yeah. Bama. Still give me the birds, but I mean, I don't know. That I'm taking the birds too. Yeah, I'm taking bird up Tampa <laughs> straight up, straight, straight up. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know if they do it straight up. I don't know. It, it, give me the birds all the way. It feels like it's going to be a close game, though. So the three feels monumental. And we, we're getting a, re- a repeat Super Bowl, <laughs> Chiefs Birds again. <laughs> How crazy would no. that be? The long odds on that. I will say, not it normally doesn't pan out to where the both one seeds face each other in the Super Bowl. It's not uncommon, obviously, but it feels mm-hmm. uncommon. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't happen a lot. So if there's one one seed that's going to disappoint and not make it, Baltimore. Easily Baltimore. It's Baltimore and San Fran. Yeah. Yeah. Like, San, I feel like San Fran, in my mind, San Fran's been the best team in the NFL, like, the entire year. Even when they faltered and had that three-game skid, I wasn't, like, really worried about them. I just feel like their roster top to bottom. It feels like it's up to everywhere. Dallas and having to bet on them to be the upsetter. Like, I would be, like, just, I, I would be so shocked if San Fran's not in the Super Unless Bowl it's, like, the Rams that just fucking do some fuck shit against them in the divisional round. Possibly. But I think the difference between San Fran and... And like the Rams, who are like the sixth seed, is way bigger than like the Ravens and the Texans, who's like I don't know if the Texans are the sixth seed. Yeah. Or, or they're oh shit, they right. They Either way, like I would be surprised if any NFC team beat San Fran. I wouldn't be surprised if Cleveland beat Baltimore. If the Chiefs beat Baltimore. If like any like Texans, I, that would surprise you. Shit. Okay. Me. Yeah. The young versus old, but I think right. there's like two or three teams that really wouldn't surprise me if they beat. The Ravens. I do think that, like, and Jack's been saying this a lot, how, like, the team is different now. They're, they are built with a lot of veterans who, like, have learned from their past, play, uh, their past playoff appearances, and I think they'll be much more ready. And they do feel like a little bit of a different team, just, like, energy-wise now. So I'd be surprised if they lost, but, like, I'd be way more surprised if San Fran lost to one of the NFC. Me too. I agree. So I as of today, January 11th, my Super Bowl prediction – Niners beat Browns. Oh my God. Niners bro. beat Browns. That's what? what's happening. Flacco. Flacco is making it back to the Super Bowl. What? He's going to be facing the 49ers, and the 49ers get their redemption against Joe Flacco. We don't oh, forget. Oh, Tony. All right, give yours. What do you think? 2019 rematch and rematch of the result. Chiefs over Niners. Damn. You think Chiefs over the Sam Disrespect. Brown. Wow. You really got them going. Oh, you did say that. Um, I actually think I wanted to take the same Super Bowl. But I would take the Niners over the Chiefs. Okay, you're taking Chiefs too. No, he, you took Chiefs. You took the Chiefs. Yeah, but you said he said Niners. I think over I want to take them going to the Super no, Bowl. No, but I'm, I'm saying you agree the Chiefs will make it. I I don't know if I agree or I, or if I feel good about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought I'm, you were going to say them. the Niners Ravens rematch for the Niners this time. No, I want to. It just feels too chalky. Like if I if I actually had to bet on it, like I would feel really comfortable going Ravens Niners. But I think a little fun, you know? Yeah. But you know what? After the Chiefs and Browns both lose their first round, like we'll be back here making new predictions. So, Fair. you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, there you have it. Seventy-one minutes, seventy-two minutes, seventy-two glorious minutes of us yapping about the wild card. We're gonna be back every week, probably every Friday. I'm assuming. We want to get it out before the uh, before the weekend hits, divisional round, conference championship, and of course the Super Bowl. Biggest of what? Priority number one: getting on underdog. Using code BDGE when you sign up. Hit the props that we've been yapping about throughout this video. They'll give you a 100% deposit match. You can go take any of Tony's bets. He's throwing units around fucking <laughs> left and right. Not a unit guy, but just a trap guy. Trap guy. Use promo code BDG so JMO can uh, stay in his apartment. Otherwise, he has to move back into the office. Please. Wow. Hang. <laughs>